Deciding if you should add a new food dish to your menu can be hard when you have several restaurants and several cooks providing you recipes constantly. And it can be time consuming if you're going back and forth with emails, chat messages, and other type of communication systems that can be really time consuming. You can avoid all of this using an approval system. On this video, I'm going to show you job form approvals that can save you a ton of time. Plus, it's going to be more professional. So let's get started right now. Welcome to Job4. My name is George, and I'm going to show you how to create this approval system for your company. The idea is to avoid getting recipes to the CEO if the recipe is not ready, or maybe it doesn't fit the type of food that you have at your restaurants. Maybe the recipe is for a Mexican food dish and you are serving European style dishes. So in this case, the branch manager is not going to pass it through to the corporate cook or the CEO. And this is going to save a ton of time to the upper levels of the managers, okay? So in this case, I'm going to show you, for example, a cook is going to fill out a form with the recipe. The branch manager is going to decide if it's a good fit it to approve it or not. And if it gets approved, it's gonna go to the next step to the corporate cook. And then it's going to decide if it's a viable recipe to implement or not. And if it gets denied, it's gonna email the branch manager. And if it gets approved, it's gonna go to the CEO. And you can make this as wide as you want with approvals and denials with people who are working in this company. Now, let's go ahead and build it so you understand how this works and how easy it is to implement it, okay? So this is my job form dashboard and this is where you're going to get started. The first thing I recommend that you create is the recipe form. This is the one that the cooks are going to submit. So in this case, we're gonna go into create a form. You can go ahead and start from scratch, but in this case, we are going to use a template. And in templates, you can find already recipe templates that you can use. So for example, here are several templates that you can go ahead and preview, see if it's a right fit for your restaurant or not. And you can go ahead and remove elements, add elements. And the idea is to find a template that kind of fits your needs so you can implement it on your restaurant, okay? So there's several recipes that you can use. In this case, I'm going to use this template, which is the recipe submission form. I'm gonna use it, and then it's going to open up the job form builder. In this case, I can go ahead and modify it and obviously customize it to my own needs. In this case, I am going to leave it as it is, which has all the steps that I'm going to need for this process. Well, I'll just get rid of the address and the phone number, okay? And we're going, we're going to leave the submitter name and we'll name this cook name and the submitter email, okay? There we go, we, have, we now have the recipe submission form. Let's go into our approval system by default, we're going to get these pre-built template. That's a simple layout of a approval system. Let's go ahead and remove these because we are not going to use them. Okay, we're going to create them from our own. Okay, let's go ahead and remove these. There we go. And now we want to obviously go through the first approval. Now, before we go through the first approval, I want to add a filter for this. So it doesn't even reach the branch manager if it doesn't go through the first condition. So let me go ahead and delete this again. And we're gonna add the if else condition. We are going to add it. Here we go. And we're gonna add a quick condition. For example, we're going to say, if the type of meal is equal to, for example, main dishes, we're going to pass this through to the next step. If it doesn't have that, criteria, it's not going to go through the next step. So now we have the if else condition and we need to set to true or false. So that means that the next step is going to go to the branch manager, put in connected, and this is going to be true. So it's going to continue if the condition is met and we're gonna email the cook if the condition is not met. So let's go ahead and connect it. We're going to set it to false and email cook missing data that's an example just so you get an idea and that's the first step for the the branch manager okay and once we added the branch manager we have the option to add the next step for if it gets approved for example we're going to go through the next approval and you do have the option for approval sign and normal approval in this case we're going to use the approval for this one and we're going to tie this to the first condition which is going to be the output if it's approved okay so if it's approved by the branch manager, then we're going to send it to the next step, which is going to be, for example, the corporate cook. 
And if it's not, we're going to send out an email. We're going to add the email. And in this case, if it doesn't get approved, we're going to tie it to this email. The outcome is going to be denied. OK, and this email is going to go to email. So it's going to let the cook know that it got denied. So to customize the email, we're going to select it, select the settings and we can customize this email and let them know that the recipe hasn't been approved. OK, and the recipient is going to be tied to the form submitter. So in this case, the recipient email is going to be from the form field submitted email submitter email. This one is for that email. We can go ahead and type the email manually here. But the idea is for the cook who actually submitted and added their email is going to get notified that it got denied. All right. So the next step is going to be for the corporate cook. And then again, we're going to go through the same flow. So if it gets approved, it's going to go to the next step, which is going to be the approval and sign. OK, so we're going to again tie this outcome. It's going to be approved and it's going to be CEO, which is going to be the last step for this. And if it gets denied by the corporate cook, it's going to get an email that again, it's been denied. OK, so it's been denied and it's going to be email. Branch manager. And again, you can add the cook email there, too, if you like. Again, to edit this, we'll go into settings. We have the email template here that we can go ahead and customize it. The recipients in this case, we can add the branch manager here since that email is not going to be modified and we can leave the cook here if we like, which is going to be the submitter email. But you can go ahead and remove it if you like. That's up to you. In this case, we'll add the same email for the branch manager. Go ahead and save it. There we go. And the CEO has the option to approve or sign. Again, we're going to add one last step, which is email. Well, actually, two emails. Here we go. One email for approved and one email for denied. So we're going to select approved, denied, and we're going to say email everyone. So everyone knows that it's been denied by the CEO. And again, we can go ahead and customize it here. Settings, custom email recipients add all the emails right here. Since we're, we said we're going to email everyone. And you're good to go. And over here is email approved and we can send it to everyone. If it's approved, it depends how you want to send out the email. OK, and again, we have the option for the settings, customize the email recipients at the recipients who are going to get notified that it's been approved. It could be everyone or it could be the branch manager, etc. You decide how you want to use this. And at the end, we can go ahead and end this. OK, here we go. There we go. It's been end. Now, this is a really great way to avoid spending time trying to get a recipe approved because it, instead of going back and forth with several recipes that maybe are not ready, maybe it has ingredients that have too much sugar, too much salt, or the recipe has nothing to do with the restaurant style. So it can go through all these filters and avoid going to the corporate cook, the CEO, if it's not ready. And if you have more steps, you can go ahead and add them right here so they can approve it or deny it. And there's several elements that we can take advantage of so we can make this as complex or as simple as we like with signable documents, if else conditions, conditional branch, split branches, merge branches and the end right here. So all of this can be used to save time with approvals. Once you're done, go into settings and we can go ahead and change the title status enabled by default and restart approvals is enabled by default. You can change this if you like. And then we're finished. We can go into publish. We can share the link or it's going to get automatically triggered when they submit the recipe. So it's as easy as that to start an approval system for your cooks so they can submit their new recipes and new creations, which is going to save you a ton of time and stop going back and forth using the approval system. Well, I thank you all for watching. Please let us know here in the comments what you think about this approval system. And don't forget to subscribe, like, Hit that little bell notification to get notified when new videos come out. And that's a wrap.